Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome my name is Heather and on this channel we like to walk a very fine line between a shopping addicted makeup monster and a responsible adult with a makeup hobby. Now I really enjoy eyeshadow singles, duochromes, multichromes, blush, highlight, lip gloss, basically everything except pressed glitter and today we're going to be doing my June palette ranking. So if that sounds like something you're interested in stick with me we're getting into it right now. And before we get into the palettes which is their or a fair number of palettes this time around. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple other things that I had picked up that I had some pretty strong opinions about. So the first thing is this. Um, I ordered three of the Profusion and Jurassic Park uh, liquid, like duochrome, multichrome eyeshadow things. And I just want to show you like how poorly these dry down. First of all, they're very patchy, very streaky. This one is Mosasaurus. So you can see there it's like really like streaky like there you can see how like patchy it is and I'm gonna show you that these do not dry down because it's really absurd packaging that was really cool Baronyx is the like blue toned one that flips to like a purple And then I also picked up a T-Rex, which is the one that's like a gold to like a red amber kind of color. Looks like that. So you can see like all three of them have kind of some patchiness issues, but they just don't dry down. Like continually don't dry down. So I'll show you that in just a moment, but I just wanted to tell you guys I would pass on those entirely. They're almost $10 a piece and they will not work for hooded eyes. The second thing I picked up from that Jurassic World set was the uh, liner palette, and I did give this a try once, and I kind of liked what I had put together, um, but the the shades, like when you spray into the pan, you have to spray like pretty much all the shades together, so you start kind of like losing the embossing for every single one of them, um, and the, the actual colors themselves, I feel like they can get a little streaky, like especially these dark ones. So I was not like super impressed by this either. And I did pick up five of the Odin's Eye highlighters from the Soulmate 2 collection. So I have Moon Talk, Warm Sunshine, Lavender Dream, Azura Shine, and Rose Sky. So I picked up all but one, I believe, and I do really, really like those. The embossing is beautiful, the packaging is beautiful, they wear beautifully. Um, I'm actually wearing one of the highlights today. This is Rose Sky right here. Super, super pretty. So I definitely would um, encourage you to think about those. If you're thinking about them, pick one up. You're not going to be disappointed. Okay, now let's get into the palettes. That's the real reason we're here. I have 11 palettes to talk about. Okay, so let's start with the bottom, and that is the Melt Mary Jane palette. What a nightmare this was to work with. I picked it up because everybody was like saying about how, you know, this palette wasn't so great, and I looked at it, you know, in store, online, everything, and I was like, this actually looks like a really pretty color story. I still want to try it out, even though it's got mixed reviews. So I picked it up. This was terrible. I When I tried to use this, before I went to go to work, I had to wipe my eyeshadow look off twice and restart it with a different palette to try to get this to like to look better. I tried to use this Sweet Lucy shade all over my lid and it was like rubbing cat litter on my eyes. It was sharp, it felt like it was cutting my lids, like it was very weird. And I've never had anything so terrible in my life. I contacted Sephora and told them I'm pretty sure this is expired because I've never had such an issue in my life. And they were so apologetic um, and gave me a refund, which I appreciate. But like this was <laughs> not a good palette. So it's number 11. Number 10 this month is the Ulta Beauty Thor collab. So it is these two palettes right here and they do both break apart. They're magnetized together, which I think is really cool. I think that's the only reason it made it up higher than the Mary Jean. <laughs> So I'll show you these individually before I drop them on the floor. The one side is like red tones, looks like this, this is the Mighty Thor side. And then the other side 
is like the regular Thor side and it looks like this. The shades are really pretty but the Ulta eyeshadow formula is very soft. Like their metallics I see more as like a satin, not a true metallic because they're very very soft. They don't have a lot of light reflect. So I love the packaging. I love the artwork. Like I think this is such a cool palette. I love the magnetized part of it. But the actual quality of the shadows inside is like meh. So I'll keep it because I love this and I'm like such a huge Marvel nerd but if it wasn't Marvel, I would never have bought it. Next up, this is the Hip Dot and Girl Scouts palette coming in at number 9. And it looks like this. I put this one a little bit higher than the other palettes that we just talked about because number 1, it's scented. It smells like the Caramel Delight cookies, which are my favorite cookies. I feel like for such a limited color story, which Six Pans I would say is a more limited color story, we didn't need both of these two shades right here. We either needed to take this shade and make it more pink toned, but keep it in that like light color family and then make one of these different, or these should have been like way more different to begin with. So I, I don't know. That part I'm kind of like, that was unnecessary, but I do really like the color story. I like the way they hold up. This combined with some of my like singles and my toppers and like special shades from other indie brands is a match made in heaven. Alright, next up is the other Thor palette. So this is the Valkyrie palette, I think. Yeah, the Valkyrie palette, which looks like this. This is what drew me into the color story for, or to the palettes for both of these collections. This color story right here. I really love this kind of silvery shade. I liked the combination of this kind of gray purple with a true purple and then the blues. When I do looks with this one, I do really like how it comes out. But again, the metallics just aren't punchy enough for me. So I tend to start with this palette and then go over top of it with something else just to kind of amp up the metallic nature of those shades. So that was number eight. Number seven, this is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. And yes, it's super fingerprinty. Sorry. That's what this one looks like. I like this palette a lot. My husband got me this for Mother's Day, which I super appreciated. I could not get these to work without creasing for me, these like cream shadows. So I skip over those. But everything else in the palette I do really like. This shimmer specifically has this like very deep Merlot kind of cranberry type reflect to it which I think is very pretty. I've really enjoyed using these other shimmers as well. As far as like neutral to like neutral berry-ish type palettes go, I think this is a really good quality palette. Do you need to spend 65-ish dollars to pick up something to get this color story? Absolutely not. Um, you can definitely get it for cheaper but I did really like that one. And then... Coming in in number six is the ColourPop by the Rosé palette. I really liked the metallics in this one, so I picked this up specifically for the metallics. I swatched these two shades when I was in store the one time and could not get this palette out of my mind. So when it went on sale, I <laughs> picked it up. It's actually quite similar to the Patrick Ta, so if you're looking for something like that, you could get something like this, although the shimmers in this one are all quite light in comparison to Patrick Ta. But the mattes, I think, are quite similar. I do like the color story. I think it's really pretty. It's nice, soft, you know, easy kind of looks. But again, not the most, like, colorful, spectacular things. So it had to go a little lower for that reason. All right. And here I am, like, second-guessing my top five already. I think I could make a case for pretty much any of these to switch the order that they're in, but we'll leave them in this order for now. Oh, and let's show you this. So it's been about, let's see, at the most about nine minutes. You see how that's still not dry? That's still not dry? And I have glitter on all three of my fingers. Nine minutes later. like. Who has time to sit like this and let their lids dry for nine minutes and it's still not dry? Like, it's, like, sticky. Ugh. I'm so disappointed by those, honestly. Like, because they looked so pretty and then when you actually, like, try to use them, it's a no. Alright. Point made. 
So number five is the ColourPop Wait and See palette, which looks like this. It's a cute little quad. Yes, I have the high tide. Yes, this looks like high tide, but I still wanted it. And I picked it up. I do really like the colors that they used in here. This shade here kind of has this like really strong gold reflect, which I don't necessarily need as much. I wish this would have been like a lighter iridescent type shade um, or something like super, super dark, but whatever. Um, I do really like this shade a lot, especially on like the lower inner lash line. I think that looks really pretty. And then these two blend very nicely together to give you a nice gradient. You would think because they're so far apart that they wouldn't do that, but they actually do blend really nicely. So for $10, I was not disappointed by this one. And it came in at number five. Coming in at number four, this is the Odin's Eye and Sulman palette. And well, this is Sulman 2, which is... I think Swedish or Sun and Moon if I remember correctly from other people's videos um, but this is what this palette looks like it's a beautiful beautiful color story I love that you have these really soft almost pastel tones then you've got some really deep jewel tones you've got more warm kind of issue um, shades down here and then this metallic in here is so pretty it has this like super sparkly finish to it that's the kind of shimmers that I want if the Thor palette, like if Valkyrie had had that type of formula right here, it probably would have been number one. I would have been so obsessed, but it didn't, so we're just making do. And I think the rest of the palette is really pretty. I love this, I love this like lavender metallic hair, but yes, very pretty, jewel toned, cool toned color story came in at number four. Coming in at number three is the Blend Bunny Surge palette. I really like this one. You know, for how big her palettes are in terms of pan size or quantity, I guess I'll say, the actual palette itself is not super big. Like, it doesn't feel enormous. So I really like that about her palettes. I love the gradients that you have, and I love these neon shades. Every time I use these for, like, a pop of neon within one of my eye looks, I'm always so happy with how it came out. So I had to put this one at number three. Coming in at number two is the Melt Muerte palette. And I just had to say, I really like this color story. I still struggle sometimes to mix the reds and the blues together in terms of making like a cohesive look, but the reds individually and the blues individually give me such a beautiful, like monochromatic, dark, smoky, vampy base to then build off of with other metallics that I really, really like that. And I love this like denim blue with the purple sparkles in it. That is such a beautiful color. I use it almost every time I go into this palette. So this one came all the way up to number two because I've really been enjoying using it. And then number one is the Cosmic Brushes Serenity Palette. So when I saw this sneak peeked, I was like, ooh, you have my interest because the color story, like the front cover of this palette packaging, just, I was like, if the inside looks like this, I'm going to love it. And it does. It definitely pulls in those same kind of colors. I do really like the metallics in here, and this inner corner shade is quite nice. It's got kind of a green shade to it. You've got some kind of like swampier greens here, and this green metallic is really dark and rich. And then you've got some beautiful like cool toned blues. I think I could have done without the brown and the orange because I don't really see that they're like super cohesive with everything else. Like if I color cover those two up, this is a much more cohesive color story to me than with those two, but they're in there. So I guess if you find those helpful you can use them but I pretty much ignore those two and stick to everything else in this palette but even with those two shades ignored this palette like raced to number one easily and with that said that is everything for this video I want to thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe before you go and I'm going to catch you in my next video bye